Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Herp Monday number 40 and we have a beautiful one for you today. Today's Herp is an animal that is very common in the pet trade. Um, maybe not for all the right reasons, but definitely one that you should keep an eye out for. Today we are going to be talking about the... Damn. The Brazilian Rainbow Boa. So the Brazilian Rainbow Boa, or scientific name Epicrates Sincrea. Again, that is Epicrates Sincrea, C-E-N-C-H-R-I-A. It is part of the family Boadi, um, which is the family of boas. Imagine that. It is native to the Amazon River Basin, um, Venezuela, Suriname, Guyana. So think super um, far south Central America and kind of northern to central Amazon River um, in South America. But they are found east of the Andes. Do not seem west. Of the Andes. Now this snake is usually found in very humid woodlands and rainforests. Um, but it can also be found in open savannas. Um, but something that is interesting about this, even though people think boas being in trees, things like that, these are primarily a terrestrial, meaning that they are primarily found on the ground. They do climb, do not get me wrong, they, they are climbers, but they are primarily terrestrial. Um, they are a medium-sized uh, snake with a fairly small head. Um, you see here, you see here, it's a fairly small head. Um, but it is wider than the neck. Um, in terms of size, you're talking about four to six feet. Six feet seem to be their range, which is 1.2 to 1.8. Um, something else about this snake, probably tell from the pictures, it has extremely soft skin. This is not a real dry, rough snake. These things are incredibly soft to touch and feel really smooth. Um, but, obviously, most thing that's noticeable about these is the sheen. It's iridescent glimmer. Um, you can see here, here's a picture of it. It almost looks like something from a you know, computer game or something. I don't know, it's incredible incredible coloration that color coloration actually comes from they have a extremely thin clear layer on the outside of their skin that thin layer has very tiny ridges that act as prisms so you know when you were in grade school you held up a prism to see it break open the light that's actually what the their skin does is it's refracting the light and creating this incredible rainbow colored effect um super unique um through the really odd just really odd the fact that they had this coloration um they are a brown to reddish sna uh, snake you can kind of tell from the pictures i know it's hard to get away from that iridescent sheen the blues the purples the greens but they are primarily a reddish and then if you look they have these real big lines on the top of their head with these um, large black rings going down their back. But something interesting about these is actually these dark blotches down the side. Um, you can even tell it here. Uh, you can tell it here as well. These really dark blotches. Here you can see those circles that go down the back. But those blotches um, always have this reddish to orange crescent across the top. Um, seems to be really unique. I don't know if that's throughout all the rainbow boas, but it does seem to be throughout all rainbow bo boas, even the ones that have different color. Um, and speaking of that, these do vary in color and markings extensively. You have albino boas, you have different rainbow. I mean, it is the amount of variation in their color and markings actually. Um, if you're wanting to tell the sex of your rainbow boa, if you have one, one way that you can, it's not always reliable, is that males have larger spurs along the side of the vent, have thicker tails. The thicker tail one is definitely 
much more reliable. Their tail is what holds the hemipenes, um, which are the organs that a snake use for impregnation. I encourage you to look them up. Um, but that those spurs are kind of interesting, actually. The rainbow boas are actually classified as a primitive snake. And a primitive snake means that they have actually been on Earth for millions and millions of years without really having involved much. Um, because of this, they actually s share several evolutionary leftovers from their ancestors, which are not seen in modern snakes. Um, something to note of the modern snakes, um, or of the primitive snakes, so the rainbow boas actually have two lungs, whereas modern snakes only have one. Um, rainbow boas actually have pelvic bones as well. And remember we were talking about those spurs. Well, those are actually vestigial hind limbs. Um, and they are not attached to the backbone in any way. They seem really floating um, muscle. So that's really interesting. Two lungs, pelvic bones, got some vestigial hind limbs. Um, really interesting. And... In the wild, these are going to feed on rodents, birds, and lizards. You know, you're kind of your normal um, snake foods. Um, but they are a constrictor, just like you think of boas are. Um, meaning that they're grabbing their prey and they're holding on tight and then they squeeze, squeeze the life out. Um, but they are found heavily in captivity. They can live up to 25 years in captivity, actually. Um, one of the reasons why these are common in the pet trade is obviously because of their skin color. They're not the hardest snake to keep, but they do require a very, very, very high humidity to be healthy. Um, that's what causes their skin to stay soft and what they really need. So if you are looking into this, um, please um, just be aware that you do have to have that high humidity. If you're living in an already humid environment, maybe get away with less operation costs but if you're living say in Arizona please look into either getting another snake or you will have to get humidifier putting a lot of effort these rainbow boas have enough humidity to survive not to survive to be and you want if you have a pet you definitely want your pet to be healthy <clears throat> um yes really that humidity is what I would classify this snake as a intermediate difficulty snake um, beginners can have them experienced people can have them but beginners have to it's less of a learning curve um, they're not that big remember these are only four to six feet 1.2 to 1.8 meters they're not exactly an extremely large snake but I would definitely make sure you do or you do any sort of pet now the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on um it's kind of two interesting facts and it has to do with their reproduction and their sexual maturity um so sexual maturity in the rainbow boas is actually determined ra by length rather than age males uh, become sexually mature at about four feet 1.2 meters and females at about 4.5 feet 1.4 meters um, and they usually reach these sizes between two and a half, four years of age. Um, basically, what this would mean is if you equate this to humans, a human would not become hit puberty until they got to over five and a half feet tall. Some people will never get there, um, or we'll say five feet, something like that. Um, just really interesting. Most things are determined by age other than length, but. Rainbow boas, it seems like they have to get to that size. Um, something else about rainbow boas, um, they actually give birth to live young. These are an ovoviparous species. Um, they gestate for like 8 to 12 weeks, I believe. And then they just give birth to 1 to 30 live babies. Um, normally, I believe the average is 10, but they can do it. But the final interesting fact is that this is a species that is actually known, a known uh, example of parthenogenesis. Um, parthenogenesis is actually an incredibly rare phenomenon in which a female member of a species can reproduce asexually, meaning with no male genetic input whatsoever. Um, this was determined in 2012, I believe, in a zoo, a female was with a um, was with a male, but it was a 
um, male that had been neutered, basically. And so there was no way that this male could have impregnated this female. And the female actually gave birth. And what happens is those females' eggs basically spontaneously grow, develop into young with, without that male genetic input. And then the resulting ba babies are actually 100% clones of their mother. So she makes little tiny clones of them. Um, I should note that just because they have been known to do this does not mean you should expect this to happen in your your little terrarium at home. Extremely rare, not very often, but it has been known to. I'm not going to say no. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hopes again. Please check out the Fish Fridays. I'm hoping you enjoy the new introduction. Um, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And...